Reality creation is the process by which you manifest or materialize worlds in order for you to shift into. But the way that this happens is kind of mysterious. Now this is recorded in September of 2023. And depending on where you're at, this information could change or become quickly outdated because a lot of it hinges upon our understanding of basic neuroscience and the ways that neurons fire. But if you were coming from a binary linear society, like most of my listeners are right now, there is this big upheaval in our understanding and a transition to quantum consciousness. And as a result, our science is starting to change. So for example, it has been theorized that the microtubules in the axon are somehow linked with quantum consciousness and the different potentials that neurons can have. But then you have thought leaders like Dr. Donald Hoffman, cognitive evolutionary neuroscientist, who says that neurons don't exist unless you're looking for them, and neither does the heart. In fact, reality doesn't exist beyond this interface, and we are designed to have this interface in order to reproduce and pass our genes on. That's his primary perspective, given the evolutionary part of his experience and expertise. He's done amazing work to model this. It's not just theory. He's actually done the mathematics on this to demonstrate that we are, in fact, wired to not see reality as it actually is. And we have adapted these mechanisms for which to cope with all of the information that we have and to make it quote unquote real to us, but that it is in fact not real at all. It is an abstraction. And he believes that very strongly that perhaps we are indeed in a simulation. And at the very least, theorizes that neurons may not even actually exist, that they are abstractions for which our interface has designed to partake in this interaction with this conceptual framework that we have evolved into as a species. And so the idea of consciousness being reduced down to these neurons, he takes quite a stance against. But his work is very complicated and I don't want to oversimplify it. But I like to reference it to say that one of the emerging viewpoints in this idea of quantum consciousness and where we're going is the fact that the nature of neuroscience, as we have learned and as I'm going to discuss with you tonight, as it pertains to reality shifting, is in fact changing. That is the point. It is it is completely changing. Now, fundamentally, when we think of pulse streams as it relates to reality creation, what it means is that there is a series of information streams that pulse outward, almost like an aggregate similar to binary neurons, which I will describe in detail in just a moment. And so when you are creating reality, you have to add to it and add to it and add to it. And then boom, it comes into existence, right? This is a pulse stream firing effect. And where I'm at presently, originating from a binary society that is undergoing an upgrade to quantum, and where most of you are at as well, this is the way that manifestation works. As so above, as so below is a principle. So what we can do is we can look at the tiniest little cells. Well, they're not always super tiny, but neurons aggregate information across their dendritic tree. And these are like if you imagine looking at a tree and you see the branches where there's like the leaves and it's rustling in the wind. Neurons look like that too, for the most part. 
there are some variabilities, but just generally speaking, there is a, an arborization similar to how you would see in nature. And what happens is that there are chemicals that will touch upon receptors. You can think of those like leaves and the chemicals will excite or modulate or inhibit depending on the receptor and the chemical the membrane that everything is tied to so all cells are encased in a membrane right and the voltage of that membrane is very very precise is super precise and when it deviates either up or down from its magic little threshold and each cell type has a slightly different precise threshold what happens is that the cell will become depolarized or hyperpolarized and that will affect its firing rate so what happens is that you have this information that comes down tickles the receptors or tickles the leaves of the tree and that has the effect of tickling the branch and tickling the encasing of the neuron and that information passes across the soma right the cell body and gets to this little junction point called the axon hillock the axon hillock is kind of like a little mini computer inside each neuron and its primary function as we've learned in, in basic neuroscience from binary societies and i believe that it's actually more complex than what i'm about to share with you but we are taught that it sums the total inputs and is sort of the regulator for whether or not the cell will fire and so what happens is that all of that tickling all of the the chemicals coming down creates this voltage change which then gets fed into this little computer the axon hillock that then is like go or no go see how we're still stuck in binary right go or no go and this is why things can change and similarly to talk about neurons being excitatory or inhibitory this is also a binary structure which is why it will be outdated and in fact it's much more complex when i was doing my phd the models that we were using the binary models for the motor pathways were we all knew as a scientist <laughs> as scientists who are working in that field that they were oversimplified and they had been that way for decades and i was at the cusp of when we were starting to understand that it didn't work the way that we thought that it worked and now i'm sure it's moved on even further right um so i just bring that up to you to demonstrate how our thought patterns in science echo this binary structure this zero and one go or no go phenomenon and in reality the models are not really perfect and as we continue to evolve they're no longer sufficient to explain what is happening but let's continue on our binary basic neuroscience journey so we get this information at the axon hillock which is the junction point between the cell body and the uh the axon and you can kind of think of it as the very top part of a trunk you know how the trunk of a tree will start to split off and then it has all of these branches right the dendritic arborization goes down to that singular point of when that trunk starts that's where the axon hillock is and then the trunk of the tree would then be the axon where if the computer says go then what happens is that it's like boom 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 and it fires off a series of action potentials or sometimes just one it depends but it culminates the entire signal from the branches and then it shoots off this like bam and as it shoots off this bam it goes into the roots and then the roots then release their chemicals or their peptides and a variety of things now the microtubules that are theorized to partake in the probability of quantum consciousness and the neurons doing something special in the quantum way that 
is not fully clear to me, but I find very intriguing, are in the axon. And so they're in the trunk of the tree. And they are thought to magic something in the cell and enable it to come online quantum style. Kind of cool. I'll cover that in future episodes. I have to do more research into that. But essentially, this is a pulse stream activity that now, if this law of as so above, as so below means as so below, as so above, right? Now we can extrapolate it backwards with a little more of understanding of how this relates to the manifestation process when you're in a binary society in that you are energetically creating a world and materializing it, right? But just because you start to manifest doesn't mean that it just magically comes into view. Just because you want something doesn't mean that you can have it right now. Sometimes you can, right? And especially if you've been working towards something or if the timing is right or if the cell just happens to be already depolarized or if there are other inputs that are aggregating around to support that manifestation. So for example, let's say you want to help people and you have this incredible idea for being of service to society and you happen to be existing at a time point where people need your service and there's not many other people that are offering what you're offering, right? And so then it's like the inputs are accelerated because the universe or the essence of the world or the essence of the need, right? Because need is also an energy frequency, it's a vibration. And so now you're a perfect match for this need. And then the universe almost bends over backwards to make sure that you get there in the quickest, most efficient time possible. And so that is one way where on that dendritic arborization, on that dendritic tree, you have support from the universe. It's like, yes, 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 we're going to lift this person up. Yes, yes, help them go viral. Yes, yes, let's get their word out. Let's get their support. Let's get their team. Let's get their consultants, whoever it is, right? Let's get their funding for their business idea. And so then it's like, boom, 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 because you have all of the support in the environment and the surroundings. And that's why sometimes it seems like magic. And really it's this information that is aggregating in your auric and quantum field. Those are two di distinct concepts, although they can intermingle, but it's like you have this template of information that is surrounding you, of all of your goals, your dreams, your desires, your emotions, your everything that you're experiencing, right? And when you have aspirations and goals that are a match for what somebody needs, or for, let's say, an intelligent designer um, position in society, and you happen to want to be an intelligent designer, but you don't know that that exists, right? You don't know that there is a job title for that because you're ex existing in a society where that doesn't exist, but you just so happen to have the right skills and the forte for it. And then as you are shifting to a society where that is a match for you, then things can come together like in a snap of a finger. And if you are looking at the manifestation process from a linear point of view and you're watching somebody just fly things together, just like on a whim, like waking up one day and being like, hmm, I think I want to be an intelligent designer. And you're watching them from afar being like, mm, what are you talking about? There is no such thing. And then all of a sudden they're a fucking intelligent designer. <laughs> and you're like, what? this doesn't make any sense. How do they manifest that? And so this can create feelings of confusion, anger, and frustration. If you have been banging your head up against a wall, trying to manifest, let's say a destiny for yourself that is not in service to anybody. It's like, you just, not you, but this fictitious person is like, I want a yacht 
and I want a speedboat, and I want a really nice mansion, and I think I'm going to have two dogs. I'm going to have a spouse that is from a on the front page of a magazine, and everybody's going to be so envious, and they're just going to love me because I make them feel good about themselves. No, <laughs> because why, right? So can that person manifest? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. We see it all the time. And they do so as a way to manifest themselves in, I call it the gold gilded prisons, because they do so from a position of unconsciousness as a way to work out karmic patterns. But it doesn't mean that they have preferential treatment unless it's to put them away in their gold gilded prison. And then their manifestations might come together very quickly. So it wraps them up and neutralizes them. And so we have to understand that the template of the manifestation process is really contingent upon what are your core motivations, your core intentions, and your core values. And do you have the universal support to bring that into fruition? Or is this a really great opportunity for you to be in a karmic cycle for the next 80 to 800 years before you actually learn your lesson about envy and you can have all the riches in the world right but do we really want to take you along for the next chapter or leave you in a binary linear society i think we should just leave you personally <laughs> sorry a little bit of a tangent <laughs> anyway anyway so um the pulse stream mechanism is really about aggregating all of your intention all of your energy all of your aspirations and your goals and really bringing the material world into form around you through your consistency, through your dedication, through your vibration of purpose and authenticity. And if you are in the vibration of greed or oppression or stealing from people or, you know, like the lower shadow things, then I believe that, you know, like you, you should get exactly what you wish for. <laughs> I really believe that. I really genuinely believe that. And, but maybe the pulse stream mechanism might work a little differently for you since that would mostly be a service to self versus a service to other. But hopefully this has shed some light. The point is, is that it's important to be patient. It's important to have diligence and it's important to really listen to your soul's truth and your highest calling because when you are aligned with those highest potentials, then you have inordinate amount of support from other forces, from other entities, from other groups, from the universe, from the vibration of matching a need in society especially when your intentions are pure intentions and you've done the work i just commend you because it's not an easy process it's really not an easy process to go through to level yourself up like that and if you're interested in leveling yourself up like that and you would like a catalyst hand friend support coach guide i am your guide to the other side and i love upgrading people's consciousness from binary to quantum and the way that you see the world will never be the same when after we work together i really help you with your thought patterns with your emotions with the quote-unquote shadow work and uh and so much more and helping to align you with your vibration of higher ideals you know like we actually work on a value system together and we make sure that that value system is in alignment 
and we do a couple of different iterations of it because that's what I, I've found that I had to do as well. And that is what gives you the ability to select for your realities because then you select for, is this an alignment with my highest aspirations and values? Or is this playing to my lowest, older version of myself? And you get to see it mapped out. It's it's actually a phenomenal process. It's really straightforward. It's very basic. You can do it on your own. You can literally write a list of your top 10, top five core values and make sure that all of your your manifestations are in alignment with that. All of the relationships that are coming into your life, the people who are trying to give you jobs, right? The opportunities that you have, you screen for them across your list of values. For example, one of my top three is autonomy and creation. And so I now know that if I'm offered a position or an opportunity that doesn't have high autonomy, I'm not, and doesn't allow me to create, I'm not going to be happy. You know, it's like, it's a bad match. But before that process, before that clarity, I would just blindly take something if it sounded good or looked good on paper and be like, oh yeah, oh, and this, yeah, oh, oh, it looks, oh, oh, okay, okay. And so then I was setting myself up for failures and mismatches in my manifestations and blocking out the other manifestations that were trying to come to me. So this is a type of work that we do, like we actually like clarify where you're at and where you're going and make sure that you get on track and that you are stepping into the highest vibration of things like purpose and authenticity and self-love. So if you're interested in one-on-one coaching, you can reach out to me at sacredjourneyproductions at gmail.com. Okay, we'll talk soon.